Hello, um, I don't listen to as many interviews and podcasts as I used to, or indeed as I should, more fool me, but um, there was an interview last week with legendary investor Stanley Druckenmiller. It happened across my desk and I highly recommend it if you can find the time. It's long, it's an hour, but it's well worth it. Druckenmiller um, founded Duquesne Capital in 1981 and he closed it in 2010. And I think he had, he had something like 12 billion in assets and he's said to have made, I think a quarter of a billion in 2008 alone. And from 1988 to 2000, he was lead porf also lead portfolio manager of George Soros's Quantum Fund. And many of the best parts of the interview regard uh, what he learned from Soros. And there are great stories, insights and wisdom. And there's a great deal to learn from him. And so here are some of my key takeaways from that interview. In his 45 years as a chief investment officer, today's setup is like nothing Druckenmiller has ever seen because the bond market is so distorted with all the central bank buying of the last 12 years. And he doesn't know how it, how it ends. Normally, if he sees a bear market, he would hide in bonds, but that's not such an obvious option when inflation is eight, 10% and bonds are only yielding 3%. Currently, he seems to be uh, mostly on the sidelines and I'll have more on this in a moment, but a point he makes is that once inflation gets above 5%, it has never come down unless the Fed funds rate gets above CPI, and that's currently 8%. He doesn't think the Fed's fund rate can get to 8%. Um, he's generally bearish regarding today's markets, but also makes the point that he has an overly bearish mindset, and part of his process is managing that. I'm sorry, it's very windy and I haven't got my wind jammer, but um, it's what it is. 90% of his fortune and of any good short seller, he says, came on the long side in growth stocks, in his case. The maths is with you. And he says that stock markets are predictive particularly companies within the stock market. For example, the home builders, the truckers, retail, they can all tell you where the economy is going six months or a year from now. And he thinks, by the way, a recession is very likely in the, in the US. And retail investors, people like us, tend to focus on what's happening right now. And that's why they don't outperform. Current fundamentals are already reflected in the price mostly and his advice is to focus intensely on what moves the stock price what is going to change 12 18 24 months from now will the company be in better shape how are people going to react to that change and he says his number one advice do not invest in the present the present does not move stock prices change moves them He's not a fan of the diversification advocated in business schools. A big problem for investors, he says, is stale longs and stale shorts. And one should have a good knowledge of all asset classes and be able to switch between them according to what's going on. And the act of doing that keeps you on your toes. It keeps you thinking, questioning, uh, constantly questioning. If you have an idea, he says it often pays to act quickly on it and then do the research later. Today's markets move quickly and there's often not time to wait on a good idea. If an idea appeals intuitively and it fits with his macro thinking, you know, a, a copper company comes in with a copper company and he thinks copper's gonna go up, he tends to invest quickly and then do further research on the company. If he's wrong, he can get out quickly. But good ideas tend to spread fast in the market and people talk. Uh, analysts in particular. So when an idea catches on, a security moves fast, erasing much of the trade potential. So it's important to be as early as possible. Soros has spoken of that strategy in his books as well. Never mind the market. What about you? Another key thing he learned from Soros. Sizing is 70 to 80% of the equation. Part of the equation is seeing the investment, and part of the equation is seeing myself in a good trading rhythm, he says. It's not whether you're 
right or wrong, it's how much you make when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong. He believes in streaks, like in baseball. Sometimes you're seeing the ball well, sometimes you're not. And his number one of his number one job is to know when he's hot and when he's not. And when he's hot, he needs to turn the dial straight up. And when he's cold, the last thing you should do is make big bets to get even. You need to turn yourself down. And he applies the same logic to those who work for him. Placing big bets with those within his firm who are on a winning streak and often even betting against those who are on losing streaks. And we could apply the same log logic to those we follow, to commentators, to me. Know when you're hot and when you're not. And the last few months I've, I've been, I have not been hot for what it's worth. Now many great traders talk of the need for humility and part of Druckenmiller's success, I think, lies in the fact that he knows when to be humble. He knows when he's off. On one occasion in 2000, he went to Africa for six months and switched out of the market altogether. No screens, no papers, nothing. Came back fresh and made 40% in a month. Um, he sees macro chaos in the years ahead. And he feels investors need to be able to switch between assets. He's worried about global trade uh, and he doesn't rule out a return to the 1930s. I'm, I'm not sure if I buy that just because of progress generally, but he thinks blockchain is going to be very big three to five years from now, a major feature of finance, but he hasn't got any major positions in Bitcoin. He feels he's too old to compete. He may go back to short equities. He's not ec short equities at the moment, but the obvious big gains have already been made and his big concern is a humongous counter trend rally and it's not as easy as just going short in a bear market you can get your head ripped off in short squeezes he warns he says my best guess is that we're six months into a bear market that has some room to run for those tactically trading it's possible the first leg of that bear market has ended but I think it's highly highly probable that the bear market has a way to run thinks there's going to be big plays in Forex uh, coming up in a few months, you may look at shorting the dollar. The US is the first to tighten. Others will follow. And when he does, um, that's when he bets against the dollar. He's not persuaded by US exceptionalism arguments. And he's very concerned about the big picture. In my 45 years as a practitioner, he says, I've never seen a constellation such as we have now, or frankly studied one. So I have more humility in terms of my views going forward than ever. I'm open-minded to something really bad. This is an analysis harder than you've ever faced in 45 years, he says to himself. So please be open-minded because this is not a story we have seen before. So the outcome is not predictable. And he talks about having voices on each shoulder and he does his best to listen to both of them. We might see inflation, we might see deflation. Could be no growth like 66 to 82, or something much, much worse, like in the 30s. I would really like to know what he thinks about gold, but unfortunately he didn't cover that much. I know he's bought it in the past. Here comes the wind, a good time to bow out. Thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to my Substack. All oh, windy, windy, windy. And I'll be back with another video very soon.